Hello there and good afternoon and good evening, good morning. What a wonderful day it is to talk about our Father. Today I am so excited to tell you from Ephesians 2 that you are God's masterpiece. I am so excited that I just got to the right to the end of it to tell you that you are God's masterpiece. I just want to encourage you, you know, along with encouraging you, I am encouraging myself along with helping you understand I am understanding myself so the word of God is alive and active and it is teaching us and it is pushing us forward and it is helping us to uh, reveal the glo our glorious father to us in the revelation of our father is we see ourselves so quickly coming back to the Bible we are studying the book of Ephesians we studied the chapter 1 in the last two videos please go to the link and uh, review those teachings okay so we are now in Ephesians 2 it's a journey that we are enjoying so let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 onwards uh, we are reading from the New Living Translation okay here we go once you were I like the word were were you are not currently once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world obeying the devil the commander of the powers in the unseen world he is the spirit the evil ones also a spirit the evil ones also a spirit god is a spirit the evil ones are spirit too it's written here at work he is at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey god all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclination of our sinful nature. By our very own nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone. I am going to stop here before we go to verse 4. From verse 1 on verse till 4, he is describing our past selves. We were disobedient. We were disobedient because we were dead. We could not hear. A dead person is a disobedient person. You can tell a dead body, hey, move, and he does not move. Hey, he's disobedient. You may have find it funny, and yes, it is funny because we were dead. We could not hear the voice of God. You know, Adam heard the voice of God, and he was afraid. So God, we have an audible God. He is speaking. What do you obey? Words, right? When somebody says, sit, you say, that's obedience. We obey words. And here are two forces that are spent giving words. One is the enemy and one is our faithful father who is also saying. So either you obey your father and or the enemy. But now as a Christian, you are obeying your father. Right? That's why it says you were, you were, you are not currently, you were. I am here talking to the Christians. You are not a sinner. You do not sin anymore because the Bible says you were sinners. You were disobedient. Or you may say, Alistair, you know, yesterday I did something nasty and praise God, but there is redemption. You are redeemed from the blood, by the blood of the Lamb. You are redeemed from the curse of the law. Your identity is fixed. Now let us go to verse 4 because, you know, Paul did not stop writing at verse the three and we don't stay in verse three and keep feeling bad don't talk about your past many people go talking about their past you know i was like this and i'm and they cry about their past self you know get on get a move on because there is always verse four tell yourself there's always verse four there's another verse don't stop do not stop my dear friends do not stop my dear friends at verse three right let's go on like any good book that you're reading don't stop at that page and cry but go ahead and see the victory but God who, but God is so rich in mercy. You know, the, the new King James says, but God who is. And I'm used to reading the new King just like the who is was almost coming out. But praise God. But God is so rich in mercy. He is so, I like this word so. You know, it didn't say God is rich in mercy. God is merciful. Yeah, he is rich. This is an extravagant God. He is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much. There it is. God, he is rich in mercy. This is his defined God, rich in mercy. Define God, rich in mercy. 
defend God, rich in mercy, he didn't say rich in might, he didn't say rich in finances, rich in, and very important to know that he is rich in mercy, he can have all the, he has all the might, he has all the wealth, he has everything, but above all he is rich in mercy, because mercy and love works together, look at it, he loved us so much, that even though we were dead, because of our sins, because of our sins, our unbelief, we were not believing God, we didn't trust him, even though we were dead, Look at our status, dead. Your status was dead, not is, was. As a Christian, you were dead. Right now, even if you're tired, don't say, I feel like dead as a duck. No, you're going against the word of God. Because I'm going to show you that you're alive. He gave us life. And the new King James says, he made us alive. He gave us life. He gave, he gave us his own life. You can give something that you have. I can give you my tablet because I have it right now I have this tablet in my hand and I can give it to you God the same way has life and he can give you life source can give source can give right so he has life he gave us his life and when he raised Christ from the dead he gave us his life when he raised Christ from the dead for verse 6 it is only by God's grace you have been saved it's only by God's grace you have been saved. I'm going to read verse 4 again. I'm going and 5. I'm going to read it slowly. But God is so rich in mercy that he loved us so much. And it could have stopped there. I love you. Oh, he's a merciful God. Great. And then what? You know, it's that and then what? I have this question. Oh, he's so rich. And then what? He kept his money for himself. He's not sharing. Right? He's so loving. I love you. And walk away. No, he did not do that. He said, I am so rich in mercy and I love you so much that even though, even though, even though we were dead, we were dead, we are of no use. Dead in sins, a dead dog is of no use. You can't do anything, he can't guard your property. We were dead in sins, because of sins, because of, of our sins, we were dead. Dead sin, unbelief in God is trying to break you away from the life source. That is what the enemy wants to do, is question the life source. He gave you life. Have faith in God. Does God really give you life? That's why Jesus said, have faith in a God, in the God, in a God, in this God, in my Father who is rich in mercy and loves you so much. Have faith in a God who is rich in mercy and loves you so much. Even though we were dead because of our sins, He did not kill us because of our sins, our stupidity. God is not out there killing. I am here standing to tell you God is not out there killing. Whatever the examples you want to tell me, I don't care. God is not out there killing. If God is my father and I am a father of three children, I will not punish my children by giving them death. Would you if you are a father? Ask yourself this question. No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't for sure. Right? I would teach my child, oh, kill him. Hmm? Why would you do that? Right? Why would you make something and just destroy it? You know, if if you're a carpenter and you make a table, wow, and then you just break it. Why would you do that? I, mean, I don't know. I would do that. Okay, let's continue reading. Even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. There it is. He didn't give us punishment. He didn't say, you rascal, you sinner. He didn't give us condemnation. He didn't give us judgment. He didn't give us um, <laughs> slaps and beatings. He didn't give us a performance improvement plan. Okay, you're dead in sin. This is the plan. You fast 20 days, you got you got my attention. You fast 30 days, now I'm looking at you. Oh, fast 60 days, you're dead. Mm. Oh, you pray to us, you read the Bible. Now, after you have finished the entrance exam, is there you're qualified to be raised? No, 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 no. He gave us dead. What does a dead person need? Life. And that is my God. He does not go and tell you what you need to do. He gives you. He has already given you that life. He gave us life. You have the life of God. Genesis 1, he gave life to Adam. Even today, he is giving life. He gave life. When he raised Christ from the dead, it is only by, in the brackets is written in the NLT, in the New King James Version, it's only by God's grace that you have been saved. It's only by His grace. This is grace you didn't deserve. You were disobedient, not even listening. He was calling out your name. You're not listening to Him. Sinning, listening to the enemy. But what He says, guess what? I'll give you life. And you can go back and read John and understand that Jesus is our life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life.
he gave you jesus god so loved the world that he punished everybody no god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will have what money strength muscles more law and reg no will have eternal life he gave jesus there john john 5:11 says jesus is eternal life he gave give he is giving you life he knows you need life to listen to him he knows you need life to hear him a lifeless body cannot hear he knows you need life to hear oh we are just in verse 5 <laughs> praise god it is only by god's grace you have been saved because he loves you he says you don't deserve it but i love you yeah right. what he does what he does verse 6 for he raises up from the dead now it's like you know walking on the street you see this dead thing dead person you know god <laughs> i know he's not done this he's not doing it but just an example he sees the dead he raises it up he sees the dead he raises it He sees the dead. He gives life. He raises it. Now raised us along with Christ, along with the anointing that is on Jesus. He has raised me up, along with the anointing that is with Jesus. He raised me up. He just didn't raise me up and leave me there. He said, "Yo, take the same power that is on my Son Jesus Christ, the anointing, Christ, Jesus Christ. Christ is not Jesus's last name. No, no, no. Like John the Baptist. Baptist is not John's last name. This is their function. This is their function which they were called on." John went on baptizing. He was God baptized, baptizer, the Baptist, Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One came to give us liberation and liberated us. He had to be anointed of the Father to do what he was upon, what he had to do for us. Mm. The same anointing, with the same anointing, God raised you up. He raised you up with this anointing. He raised you up with this anointing, and seated us, and seated us. Not only did he raise you up from the dead and leave you there, but now he is raised you up. He has 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 raised you up. I want to say this again. He has raised you up, and he has seated you. Raised you up and seated you. Look at it. Only family seat. You know when there's a wedding, uh, going on. people of the same you know family sit together you have special sitting for special guest and he made you sit the same place jesus is sitting the status that jesus has you get to sit the same place if you are family close family in a wedding you sit at the special table yes no if you are the if you are some of somebody of power and authority you get to sit in the chief guest place in the ceremony jesus has all authority and all power and he is the chief guest and guess what the father says sit there with jesus you have the same seating you have the same <laughs> you have the same status as jesus people are the same sit status sit together yes or no yes yes it is yes yes the father made you sit where jesus is sitting he did not say okay now you are raised up fine now you go sit there in the back bench or go sit at the back you were okay fine he said no he didn't just stop there by raising you up and even if he had to just raise us up we'd have been like wow i am living he says now do you live but now live at the level of jesus he's raised your level up from there being dead giving you life and now he's brought you at the level of jesus and says sit with my son sit at the table family sit at the table servants stand and serve who sits at your table is family family sits at the table family sits at the table jesus is seated at the right hand of the father you are sitting with jesus and you are all seated at the table he prepares for me a table in the presence of my enemies and we sit and eat praise god he raises us up from the dead ha huh? seated us with him in the heavenly realm realms because we are united with Christ Jesus you are in unity with Christ Jesus the new king james says you are in Christ Jesus verse 7 so god can point out so god can point to us in all future ages as examples of incredible wealth of his grace and kindness to us verse 7 is a is a is a dynamite he does this so why did god do all this so that he can point out was is is there he's pointing out this is my son and uh, this is my beloved son i'm so well pleased and this is my 
I this is my confession and you can do you can look at verse 7 and say I am an example of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards me I am an example you everywhere you that is the, that is Alastair the example of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness not only grace but kind of my father has is incredibly gracious to me and kind to me because i am united with christ jesus now verse 8 starts now was god saved you by his grace this is that grace he's raising me up he's given me life he made me say that i don't deserve it not only that now i'm example of his grace and by this grace it's not this grace written in the bible but i would just like to put it in my version of the bible for by this grace for by this grace, God saved you by His grace when you believed. He, this grace is available. All you got to do is believe. That's have faith. The New King James says, By grace you have been saved through faith. When you believe, put your trust in God, this grace works for you. It is very important. If you don't believe you are part of a certain family and you go for that wedding, you, they don't give you that place because you don't believe it. They may call you, come sit. You say, no, I, I don't believe I am part of your family. So you, so what you sit somewhere else right if you don't believe you're part of a certain family you don't believe your belief your belief is also your identity i don't believe i'm part of this family so i can't use it you know in a building and in a building there are like 20 flats okay if you're an indian you know this in a building there's like 20 flats but my case come to only my apartment because they believe this door opens and they are part of this. They don't go everywhere else checking. Can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come? You are part of the family. You step in right in there. You don't ring the bell and ask, may I come in or can I? You ring the bell, door opens, you're in. Nobody asks you why you're here, how you're You go straight in, go to the fridge, eat, sit in the couch, throw your shoes around. That's family. That is what God wants you to do. You're in Christ. Don't keep... Checking, cross-checking with him. Am I family? Am I? He says, you are. I'm going to read further. God saved you by his grace when you believe. You can't take credit for it. Praise God, I can't take credit for it. I cannot. I know who, who I am and who God has saved. And now I'm alive. I'm a new creation. I can't take credit for this. And praise God. Lord, all credit to you. All glory to you. You can't take credit. You know, as you go down your Christian faith, there are some Christians who have got so old and they say, because I prayed, God did. No, 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 you didn't. No, no, don't say that. Because you prayed, God did. You think your prayers move God? You think God is movable? Think again. Let's pray to move God. Ah, really? <laughs> he said, you say to move the mountain. You're praying to move God. Like, this is like, these are the Christian funny jokes that I laugh at. After a time, thing. praise God. You cannot move God. He has already moved. He has already moved. How we moved? Read Ephesians. He has already moved. He has moved. All you got to do is say, yes, Lord, and thank you for your plans and just move along with him. You are going to come to the moving part. God saved 9, verse 9. Salvation is not a reward of the things we have done. Salvation is not a reward of the things we have done. Oh, because I was a good, oh, because of my goody to, to self, or because I'm so good, I am very nice. God saved me. No, 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 you were dead in trespasses. Because of his love and his rich mercy, he saved you. All you say, thank you, Father, for being, when your eyes open up to this, when you're alive, you know, alive people can see and hear. When God, as God has made you alive, you can see in his word and hear his voice. You can see in his word and hear his word. Alive people can see and hear. Alive people can see. You're alive. You can see his word and hear his voice. You can see his word. Don't close your eyes and don't shut your ears. Because you're alive. Now it's your choice whether you want to use those God-given eyes because you're alive and see in his word what he's telling to you that you're his son, you're redeemed. You are redeemed. You are redeemed. You are his son. And we continue. We'll go to verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do good things. I want us to go and look at verse 10 again. For we are God's masterpiece. That means God is the one working on us. He is the masterpiece. He is the Michelangelo. And you are his great sculpture. He is the Michelangelo. So let him work on you. 
trust his hand to work on you and I, I, I want to just look at this verse you know a little bit further it says you have been created he has created us a new in Christ Jesus he has created us a new in Christ Jesus he has created us a new I want us to quickly go to 2 Corinthians 5 17 it says it says in the new living translation and even the NKJV CEV whatever version you pick up it says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person if anyone is in Christ is a new person is a new new person is like a baby is a baby a baby is a new person a new creation he didn't say refurbished he didn't say fixed he you know the enemy and you yourself remember your past God does not every time he says new creation remind yourself I am in Christ I'm a new creation I am in Christ I'm a new creation old things are passed away old things are passed away they're dead that person passed away. That person is dead. Old things are passed away. My old life is gone. A new life has begun. The new life in Christ Jesus. There it is. You are God's masterpiece. Created a new. He is creating. He is working on you. In Christ Jesus. Created a new in Christ Jesus. He has created a new in Christ Jesus. So that we can do the things he planned for us long time. So he, we can do the things. So we can do the things he has planned. God has already put a plan in place. Jeremiah 29 11 says, what does Jeremiah 29 11 says in the NLT? It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I know. He knows the plans that he has for me. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. A plan is a good plan till we don't get together and execute it. A plan is a good plan till we don't get together and execute it. God has a plan, you are his masterpiece. God has a plan, you are his masterpiece. Both of you have to work together. God has a plan, you are his masterpiece. If you do not believe his grace, his plan does not work. That does not make you any less of a son. It's just that I, you know, it's like you tell your kid, I, we have we work as a plan, we work together on a plan and then I don't trust your plan. Fine, you're still my son, but that that masterpiece could you know could have been just so much more better you're the examples of his grace he's your his masterpiece he wants to keep working on you because his hands are hands of love see his hands of love see his hands of a father every parent has a plan for their child whether they like it or not today is your plan to study these subjects child may not like it today you have to do your algebra and geometry child may not like it but it helps when you get into an engineering Today is your plan to study the chemistry, physics and biology. Why? Mommy, I don't like it. I, we have a plan that you can go to college and graduate. Right? Right? He has plans for you. These are great plans. These are plans not to harm you. These are plans not to harm you. Now you may say, how can I execute his plans? How can this? How can I do all these things? I have Philippians 4.13 for you. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. So we'll read verse 10 again. Phil, yes, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. For we are, see, I am God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. He has created us, he has created us, he has created us a new in Christ Jesus. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, For if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. Call yourself, Alice is a new creation. Call yourself, I am a new creation. Old things are passed away. So he has created us a new in Christ Jesus. Now what? So we can do all. So we can do the good things. So we can do the good things. So we can do the good things that he has planned for us long ago. He has already set a plan. I want this from this boy. And it's good things. Not bad things. It's good things. Good things. Good things. Good things. I will tell you. Your father has a wonderful plan for you. He has plans so that you prosper not to harm you so that you have a future and a hope you can do all that things he has planned for you through christ who he has given you the strength he has given you the plan he is the master planner surrender to his grace walk with him walk with him you need he cannot execute his plan if you don't cooperate <laughs> he cannot execute his plan if you don't cooperate he's not going to force you into the plan he's going to share you the plan and you're going to say, yes, Lord, I believe that you are my God and Father. And I agree with your plan. We'll work together. Because you're going to be the masterpiece. You are the masterpiece. You are his piece. You are his workmanship. The Passion Translation says you are his poetry. 
but you got to surrender to the hand of the poet so that as he writes people sing of you they look at you and say give glory to god what a masterpiece not only is the masterpiece the the wonder of the world but the master is also look with honor he gets glory through our life don't feel shy let him get glorified through your life why feeling shy let him get glorified through your life surrender to him because through your life he is glorified people are going to say wow i'm so blessed to, to meet you and you can say this is my father who made me a masterpiece god bless you i love you above all god loves you and you are his masterpiece praise god